Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you back to Life After Grief and Loss Ministry. And we come tonight prepared to give you some enlightenment and to help you and to assist you. We know that grief is a process in life that some of us pretty much going to experience some form of some type of grief due from some type of loss, whether it be from a family member, uh, a job, or um, some different type of situation that something has been important to you in your life. And we may have lost it. So um, in the process, we understand losing someone or something, um, we go through a process of grief, grieving. And it's, it's a natural part of when we experience this um, life-changing, uncertain um, circumstance that happens in our life. And tonight, we're going to just attempt to encourage, give some advisement. And we do know and we do understand that everyone um, experience grief at a different pace, um, you know, differently. We, none of us uh, suffer grief the same way, but we are here to share our experience and that it may help um, someone that is listening to us this evening. Um, we cannot give you step by step because as I said, we each um, experience it. We each process through it differently, but somewhere um, or somehow just given our inside, our experiences that it may assist you to process through your um, grief. And we got two special ladies on tonight. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and we're going to begin our segment for this evening. And um, we're going to let our guest for this evening introduce herself first, and then we'll let our next guest. Um, um, my name is Verita Johnson, and I'm a member of Crown. Um, I have been uh, attending Crown for close to 30 years. Amen. Amen. Okay. My name is Rosa James. I am serving at Crown Kingdom Culture Center. I'm a newly servant there. So you may not have heard of me or have seen me yet, but I'm around and I'm glad to be around. God bless each of you. Amen. Amen. So we want to um, open up tonight and give um, Sister Verita a chance to share with us. And she can just share what she desired to share and what she would tell you um, she had um, experience um, lost in her life. So I just want to open it up for you, Sister Verita, to share with us this evening? Um, my loss um, centers around the loss of a child um, in 2012, uh, May of 2012. I um, lost my 17 year old son. Um, he was um, had long term illnesses as a result of prematurity. Um, um, so um, I, his life expectancy um, was not as long as he actually lived, um, but it was sudden um, for us, sudden for my family, because um, there's no real way to prepare, you know, even though, you know, the doctors may tell you one thing, um, you certainly want to believe um, something else. Um, so um, actually May um, 24th was um, nine years. Um, that we celebrated um, that loss. So, 
Okay, our condolences to you and your family concerning your loss. And um, Sister Verita, when you first experienced it, and even though you said that his life, um, he lived longer than what they expected. So when the situation, uh, when, when you lost him, when he passed on, um, how, how did you feel as a believer at that time? Um, even as a believer, I had a lot of guilt. Um, I did a lot of second guessing, um, making sure that, you know, I had made all the right decisions, um, you know, during, um, the time that he's, um, suddenly became, um, ill, um, at home. Um, you know, I opted to, because I am a nurse also, right. um, and because he was, like I said, chronically ill, we um, tend to address a lot of things at home. Okay. Um, so, you know, I had a question about whether I, um, you know, got him to the doctor soon enough, if there was something that could have been done, had I, you know, responded different. Um, you know, so I went through a lot of uh, turmoil initially. Um, just about decisions about end of life care and, you know, as a mother, whether these were the right decisions, um, because I did have, um, I do have three other children. Um, so that was also a consideration um, in making decisions. Um, so I, I think initially, even as a believer, there, were, there was a lot of guilt, um, a lot of doubting, um, a lot of closeness because I didn't want people to actually know um, what had happened, what decisions that were made. Um, but over time, um, I've been able to um, mature in my thought process and, mm -hmm. and certainly mm -hmm. convince myself daily that I did the right, yeah. that those were the right decisions. And it seemed like just listening, even listening to you on this evening, it seemed like that's um, part, and I'm going to let Sister Rosa um, speak a little bit on that, but that seems like um, um, like second guessing, um, shame, guilt plays a part in grief because, you know, even experiences that I went through, I went, you know, went through similar, you know, the guilt, the shame. Um, I think that's part of, of, of grieving. And I just like for Sister Rosa to, to speak on that a little bit. I would love to, but I want, I would like to ask Rita a question first. Okay. And I don't mm -hmm. want to cause too much pain. This time. I want to ask, you knew early on that you may lose your child and you had to walk through that day by day for at least 17 years. You said you would pass about 17 years. So how do you cope yourself with each day? Right. Uh, I know you said after it happened, you started blaming yourself and questioning what you may have done or did you do enough? But how do you walk through each day of those 17 years? Can, can you tell me something about how, what you experienced yourself to deal with um, it? You know, first, I had an older uh, older child and um, wanted more children. So um, there were some issues that we, uh, you know, addressed at that time medically. Um, and he, my son, has a twin um, that they were born a week apart um, at 23 and 24 weeks. 23 weeks kind of being the cutoff, um, you know, for any type of survival. And my daughter's done absolutely wonderful. She has a hearing impairment, but otherwise has done wonderfully. Um, my son, whose name is Cameron, um, spent 22 months in the hospital. Um, we actually brought him home um, on ventilator support, around the clock nursing care. Um, we did that for a couple of years at home. Um, so it just changed my whole um, dynamic. It changed my, at that time, you know, role as a wife. It changed 
my role as a mother because I had an older child and then I also had this other child that was still, um, you know, sick as well, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, so, you know, I questioned in the beginning, well, you know, what did I do that would have me, you know, dealing with children that have long term issues? Yes. Um, and so it was a struggle. It, it was a struggle to say, and, you know, I'm looking at other people who want children that can just get pregnant right away and don't really care how the children go from day to day. And I did everything the doctor said. I did everything I was supposed to. I followed all the rules. And then I'm having to deal with this. So we, yes. you know, at that time made medical decisions right away. Life changing, life altering um, decisions from the very beginning and that never stopped over that 17 years it never stopped so um it was rewarding but it was also very stressful you know multiple trips to the hospital um, in and out of hospitals um, you know no privacy because you have nurses in your home um, mm. you know it 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 was a very um stressful um stressful period um and still trying to maintain work you know motherhood um it was rewarding but it was if i'm honest at this point i i did not realize the amount of stress i was under until i wasn't under it and yes. then i was under a different kind of stress because now set because i don't have the stress anymore yes so now I have to adjust to not being that parent who's always on the ready to go to the hospital and always on the ready to make decisions. And I'm like, okay, now I feel guilty because I can kind of sort of live a little bit easier. Yes. Without it's, having to make those decisions. It's, it's amazing. We've been talking about grief for a few months now, but you have been experiencing grief for 17 years. And the state, some of the stages that we go to after, after the loss actually occurred, you were going through it the whole time. Like you, you mentioned that you felt guilt and you, and you felt, did I do enough? Did I, did I react soon enough? And all of these things are some of the stages are, I, I hate to use that word stage because it's not a stage because each person experiences it in a different way. But those are some of the things we start going through after a loss. So in a sense, what? you've been grieving for 17 years. Now it has become a reality where you actually experience different type of pain. But most of what? the pain you experienced already was, was a type of pain we go through at the time someone is lost in our life. And, and it's amazing how you have worked through them. And I have to give your family a lot of credit for that because they were always there by your side. And there was always life there in your house to keep you going to keep right. you, and not to, not to dwell so much on what may happen, but look at life alone because life is all around you. Even though you, mm -hmm. you expect your child may die one day, but the doctor was wrong. Thank God for that. So you had 17 right. great years with that child that if you had to give him up from the very beginning at the time you were pregnant or when the doctor told you that he wasn't going to make it, you would have missed out on all of those years. And I thank God that that, that you, you kept going forward and enjoyed the time you had with him. And not now what you experienced, not, the pain isn't quite as great because you've been walking through it for so long, but there's still pain. And I, I do understand that. And, and I'm just glad you able right. to talk about it. Some people are not able to talk about it at all, even after it happened. But because you are able to talk and make it verbal, it's going to help you even more to go walk through that part of your life. And you're going to see even greater wow. changes in your life because of what you're able to do now. Thank God for you. Yes. you know, that you had to lose your son in that matter. But thank God thank you. for your strength and what you have gone through. See, God is awesome. Yes, he is. Because you, you. you could have gave it way mm -hmm. back before now, mm -hmm. and I missed all those blessings that you received from Cameron. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm, I'm grateful to just even know you had right. now. That's a lot. And, and really, um, even being Thank in you. the ministry with Sister Verita all that time, um, 
she really managed it very well, more than she probably realized because even during the years that I have known, known her just being in the ministry together, it's like she mastered it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like she had it all together. And, you know, but, you know, you never know what a person experienced until, you know, they share. Yeah. And yes. then that makes um, a lot of time we who have not ex gone through a, an experience, we just don't take the time out to really ask a person because we really don't know what it's mm -hmm. really entail into when you experience it for yourself, what a person that in grief really experienced. Because, you know, from looking from the outside to the inside of what was going on, it's like everything was well together. So if you see that, if you have not experienced it yourself, you wouldn't really think to say, well, how can I, or what it, what can I do, you know? And, but Sister Verita, yes, you, you really um, look like you master it very well, even going through. And, and it is um, uh, a, a blessing to even see you process through uh, what you have been through and probably still grieving over because we do know that um, grief is not like we can just, it's not moving on. It's not just get over. It is a process. Right. And, and sometimes right. one might process faster than the other. And then and it really take that person to admit this is the process, this is the stage, this is the problems and issues that I have. And, you know, and just being open about what do they, you know, need or, or I don't even, you know, being open that I know I need help, but I don't know what kind of help because sometimes grief um, right. is, it, it, I, I, can, I can compare it to a ocean wave, you know, an ocean wave will come in all of something and it could be overwhelming. And then mm -hmm. other times ocean waves can come in and go ease back out without any re, you know, real damage and stuff. But sometimes grief will come in and we just don't know how to process it or handle it. And I thank God, you know, for you to be able to share. Um, and hopefully someone who lost a child would know um, how, you know, how to process through it. So, Sister Rose, I think one of the, I think one of the things. Rita, are you talking? Are you are you trying to say something? Oh yes, I was going to say. I think one of the yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you're going in and out. Can you hear me? Back. Okay. Okay. I think one of the things initially for for me was um, the ability to share with people. Um, you know how hard it was to make decisions around. Um, withdrawal of care and just to be honest that there's a lot that medicine can do but is it the right thing to do yeah. um you know we we had a um you know a meeting with a physician that said you know we can do more is that going to make a difference no we can you know go a step above what we're already doing um because I didn't want people to judge me and say, well, you know, she let her child die because she didn't go to 10 plus steps, you know, um, that, I mean, we, you know, made a decision at that time that his, that we loved him enough that suffering was 
not what we wanted. Right. Yeah. That you know, death was going to be painful for us, but yeah. suffering for him was going to be so much more yes. painful. Um, and that was probably, the, and, and initially I was not um, as open about the, um, you know, because a lot of, you know, and I, I'm being a nurse, a lot of um, African Americans don't discuss in the life issues. They don't discuss withdrawal of care because they don't want right. to be judged. They, they, you know, they want out, you know. And so for me, it was being honest and saying, I made a decision out of love, for your child. out of um, my belief that the Lord is going to work it out, that if he is to survive, it doesn't matter what I'm going to, what I decide, if the Lord wants him to be with me, then he's going to come out on the other side of this. Right. And if the Lord's will is that he, you know, then that's going to be okay also. Um, that has taken probably, um, it's probably taken six years to get to that point. It's probably taken okay. that long to be okay with um, making decisions that other people might not fully understand. Right. And it's really sad. That so I think that was a big thing for me. It, it's really sad that we have to make decisions based on what else might think when really for the best or for, our, for ourselves or for the person that we have to make decision for. And I think you looked at it in a, in a, in a great way. How it's going to benefit the child? The doctor not saying if we, if we keep him, he's going to yes. be better. If you take him off it, the doctor not saying it'll be better. It's still in God's hand. No matter how we handle it, it's in God's hand. And I think sometimes what people don't realize the worst and the hardest thing to do is take someone off the support once you put them on. So that's why it's so very important to look at when you actually do it. Because you can blame, you, you feel yourself like sometimes you might have killed your child because you took mother support. But that's not the case. You, you did what's best for him. That suffering, I, I'm like you, I wouldn't want to see right. like suffering just because I put them on support and gave them maybe a day longer or a right. month or a year longer, but it's right. still a couple hours. I got, to cut, I got to cut it off. I got to think about the child right then and there. And, and I can imagine how hard a decision that was. And it's, it's similar to when I was told about a patriarch of mine, an uncle, that I need to stop praying and he keep on living. Because that wasn't what he wanted to do, but what, what I wanted of him, that God give him more life. And he, he kept saying, I'm not, he's a baby, I'm ready to go home. And you praying the wrong prayer. Just let me go. I'm okay with it. And, and, and it's weird, but yeah. sometimes we, we do that. We want to hold on to their life when really they want to go. Your son may have be ready to go home. You know, he, he just didn't have the heart to tell mommy because he knew mommy wanted him to stay longer. But finally, mama looked at him and saw all his suffering and said, I can't do this to my child no more. I can't make him keep suffering when he doesn't have to. So doctor, I don't want you to keep on support. If God want him to stay here, God will keep him here. And uh, honey, I, I know that had to be hard for you. And thank God that you, you look at something else other than people. You looked at your child well-being. That's what I see. Not what how people felt about you, what they were thinking about you, but you saw your son, what he was going through. And your decision was based, like you said, on the love that you had for your son. And you just didn't have the strength to keep making him suffer like he was suffering. And God bless you. I know your son looking wow. down, smiling on you right now, thanking right. you for what you did for him, you know. And he's going to be in eternity because we're getting there. We're going there. We're going to be able to hug him again and yep. dance fire with him. What better place than the home with God in eternity? Uh, that, that's that's great. I mean, I just would, would stop looking upon those that are going through situations and judge them harshly when they haven't been there. That's why I, I'm grateful for the um, ministry that Crown has right now on grief because we as servant of God God's people need to show more love and compassion. And that's what it's all about, love and compassion. Yeah. And, and we have to learn how to do that. When we, we don't understand what they're going through, but we got to be able to love 
We got to have compassion. We got to show empathy. Are we just not serving like God wants to serve? And when I think about all the comfort, comforting word that God had for us and all the compassion he had for us when we, we were going through and still going through and messing up, but we can't show it to our sisters and brothers. That, that's a shame. But thank God that this ministry is going forth now. And I hope that the members of it, and as people learn more about grief, that we all be able to show more love and compassion, not just for those that are grieving, but for everyone. And like you, Sandra said, she knew you were going through, but she didn't know how much grief she was bearing. But yet and still, she was showing you love and she was showing you compassion. And I thank God for that. that we need to do more of that, more of that. Just stretch those arms out and sometimes just give a person a hug. And that's what they need sometimes, just a, just a hug to keep them going on. Yep. Oh. You know, I, and like you smiling right now, I thank God for you. Yeah. You make me want to even smile more. And thank it God. takes a lot to be selfless. Yes. That, that that's a big that's a big step. Yes. Um, being selfless because a lot of time, and it goes back to what some of what you are already said, a lot of time we don't want to let go because yeah. we looking at how I gonna feel what I'm gonna do. You know, yeah. it's it's a lot of I in it, but when you get to the place to be um selfless, to be able to release and, and let go, and then the, the thing that with it, and I know from I um, heard you when you said um uh, sister Verita that it took you six years, but that but that was yours your process to get to that moment, that time, that day. And yes. God always have a set time, a set moment. And that's like just processing through. And as I'm sure they even get to that point, your faith even had to be, had developed and got stronger in the midst of that in mm -hmm. order to be, to, you know, be selfless to be able to release him and just say, God, whatever your will, I can accept it. And so you made the decision on, I'm going to release him into God's hand. And like you said, if God intended for him to remain here, it would have been so. If he was wanted to take him on to glory as he did, he, he would have did so at the time when you was making that decision. And that was a um, brave decision. But, you know, sometimes the enemy, I have a way to come in <coughs> to try to steal our joy. Yes. When we know we are victorious, he got to try to come in with the guilt, the shame, the mm -hmm. men feel a certain type of way. But as Sister Gail says, she, she yes. commends you for your steadfastness because it, that took a lot too to walk through the process because how many you know it's a lot of moms out there who wouldn't have been able to walk in the shoes that you walked in or how many fathers that his dad had to walk through you know walk in to, to get through so God God knew knew that y'all was able to walk through this process and make that decision. And we commend you for being able to stand, um, to share, and, and to make an impact, as you say, you learn from this to even share with others. And yes. that's great because a lot of time people don't want to share or sometimes people, we don't know how to share because it's like grief is like, you left to yourself to try to process. And a lot of time you you don't know the proper way of processing because nobody talk about it. Or, and then if we had, you know, it's not really like sister um, or Dr. Rosa, she's a grief, grief counselor. But, you know, how many times have we really been advised to go to a grief counselor? And then sometimes not like in my situation, I didn't think I needed a grief counselor, but mm -hmm. I told, I sold myself on the biggest lie 
that I could. Because when I, you know, my first experience, I just didn't think, oh, I can handle this, but mm -hmm. not realizing what all you know what grief entails and it's truly a blessing for all three of us to be able to sit here to share to help encourage someone because yes, it's it right or wrong in the process but we just want to encourage others not not to sit in it right. that's you know even the enemy try to bring shame to you but i thank god that you didn't sit in it you was able to keep moving and process through. It's, it's truly a blessing, sis. I, I, think, I think you said one good thing. Um, don't be too strong for your own good. Open up. We have to learn how to open up to others around us. Everyone's not going to understand what we're going through by no means. Because either because they haven't gone through yet or the way they went through it and dealt with was entirely different from you dealing with it. Because as we have said so often, everyone do it differently. It doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen in a month. Or sometimes not even a year. Like you said, it took you almost six years. So there's no, there's a time limit because if you go to a point where you see yourself not getting better, this is for everyone now, get, see yourself not getting better, not being able to deal with what you're going through, it's time to reach out for professional help yes just telling you that i can't walk this walk by myself and i need help and most time all we do is really make you talk about it we ask you leading questions so you can open up and get your emotions out of you so you so you be able to cry about what you're going through what you're experiencing it's okay to be mad it's okay to be but just don't stay there don't stay in that spot because if you do, you can become stagnant. You find yourself getting ill. You find yourself getting sick. You find yourself dying. Because we do die from a broken heart. Right. Well, people realize they're not. We will die from a broken heart. So we have to we have to surround ourselves with others that we trust, that we feel comfortable with, we can talk with, that we can yell at sometimes, or just mainly find someone that's willing to listen to you. And really, I, 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 to me, it's like you've been doing this already. So we're really throwing this out for everyone else that haven't gotten there yet. But if you still need that area, we need to find someone else to talk to do that. You know, don't feel like you, you get on out there by yourself. You're not. Mm. Some of us have been there. Some of us know how to walk with you and talk with you and, and just get you to talk. We know how to do that. But be patient with yourself. Don't, don't think you need to be over in, in 30 days, six months. I'll, mm. I'll tell you that once, once the person leave us and that casket is, that's when the pain really start. And the beginning when we up to that point, you just go into motion the process to get that that part taken care of over with. But when it's there, been done, the had the ceremony and the service, not pain is there for real. So what do you do? Find someone that you can trust, that you feel open with. Find some things you remember about the person you can laugh about. You know, don't, don't just because they're gone, try to exclude them. There might be some things like doing it with you as a family. You might want to incorporate that, that in your family on a continuous basis. You know, Cameron like, like, I like pound cake me. So maybe every six months, we're gonna have a pound cake just for remembrance of Cameron because he liked it so much. You know, and 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 something, and that help you get through these things. A lot of people said, "Get rid of the pictures." Nah, that's Cameron when he was playing baseball. I don't keep that picture right over there because every time I look at that picture, it makes me mm -hmm. smile. Don't don't just get rid of things, just hard stuff because people said so. Sometimes those memories will bring back laughter to your heart, smile to you, and and help you go on because those memories are good memories. And I don't want anyone to ever erase good memories of someone I love and cared about. So that picture in the baseball uniform or just a simple raggedy shirt that he wore that he was crazy about, you keep that picture out. Let everybody see it. That's, that's camera right over there. Look at it. He was laughing. He had reason. He, he found joy in what he was doing while he was here for 17 years. So how can I be sad when my son had joy? He was happy here. 
And, and, and those are some things that we have to keep in our mind about the ones that we have lost and love. They got, there's something in their legacy that we can keep that will give us more joy as well. Just, just remembering those things that they did, those, those crazy things, those crazy stunts they may have pull on us once in a while. It, it, can, it can bring tears sometimes, but at the same time, it bring back a lot of joy and having just remember those things. So, but be patient with yourselves. I mean, don't push yourself or think you're going too slow in that process. But you, I'm, I would say if you go past seven or eight years, seek professional help. This is for everyone out there. Y'all going past seven or eight years in your grief process, start seeking out professional help, someone you can go to, someone you can talk to, because you don't want to get into a state of depression that knock you so far down, now you have a state of thinking about suicide. Because we, we can all walk those steps in our, in our area of grief and wonder how we got there. And maybe because we didn't open up, we didn't talk, we didn't share our feelings with anyone, no one really knew how we were feeling on the inside. That's why I tell men, they need to cry. You stop this, everybody, I tell you not to cry. If you feel like crying, cry. Because men have that stigma about, I'm a man, I should not supposed to cry. Um, that's a lie from the devil. And we ladies sometimes try to be strong too and not cry, but you want to cry, cry. Um, I, after my first session, I said, you want to keep the dog, go ahead and keep the dog too. He'll get over it. But may you feel better when you keep them. <laughs> but you, know, you just have to learn how to mm -hmm. let go. And even in doing all of this, Keep God's word ever present in your life. Yeah. Sometimes when you're going through, no one to talk. There's scripture, there's words that God placed in His word for us to go to and find comfort in Him. And we have to learn how to do that too. Don't don't push God out of our lives. If anything, bring Him into our lives even more so. Make Him even a greater part of our lives. His word, His scripture, what He said. You know, you know. He's he going to mend the broken heart. I, I, Go ahead. Go ahead. I Steve. do think, you know, I, I had to be okay with this, that I had a little, you know, angry period with God because I think one of my only requests was if you take them, I want to be there. I don't want him to, you know, feel like he is alone and dying by himself. Yeah. And I would say, we were vigil at the bedside for probably a good 10 hours. And I can tell people now that we left out of a room, we closed the door and was on the other side of the door and he passed. And so I was a little angry that I felt like the Lord had let me down because that was my one and only request is that he not die by himself. But I had to realize that I probably wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for what I was asking for. And it happened just like it was intended to happen. And literally it was, I walked out of the hospital room toward the elevator and I got a call from the nurse. And she said, I looked up and I was like, no, that can't, that can't have happened that quick. And that's just how quick it happened. We had been up probably 12 hours saying it was okay, that we were going to be fine, mm -hmm. not to struggle for us. And I think it took, you know, at that time, you know, his dad not leaving because I don't think that either of us were prepared for what we, you know, had asked, which was that we be you know, at his bedside. And so I, I, I kind of reasoned through that as well um, over the years that it happened exactly like it, it was intended to happen. And I did not abandon him, leave him. He did not feel alone. You know, I agree. So, yeah. You know, I, the scripture says I that think we have a lot, a lot of feelings, my guilt. Feels Yes. I think the scripture said that God would not allow more to come upon us than we can bear. So he knew you couldn't bear being that close to your son and seeing him go away. So he didn't allow that to happen. 
I know sometimes we say, God, when I give you more than you can bear, but that's not what the word says. He say, he will not allow more to come to you than you can bear. And I thank God for that. He, he stops Satan right his tracks. He's not going to allow us to be to a point that God know how much we could bear. He knew you couldn't stand to see your son close his eyes for the last time. So he had you right outside the door, close to him. Close to him. So you were there with him, just not in the same room. So God did, he did what he, you asked him, but he knew what, that he, he couldn't place you in that room with him. And, and, it's, and it's good to know that God, no matter what's going on, God is still watching out for us. Because I, I had a similar, Sandra, I know you back there somewhere. I'm talking too much. Sandra, but um, when, when my, my mother and I, had it, her last few days, we end up, I ended up getting the house that I could bring her in with me that was big enough for the both of us. And as she started deteriorating more and more, my one thought to God, God, please don't allow her to die here with me because I knew I couldn't handle it her being right there in the house with me and passing away so I made arrangement for her to go to a nursing facility she was there one night and she goes in on a Friday around one o'clock Saturday morning they call me at nine o'clock saying she's gone you know so I had to thank God for that because I'm not sure I would have been able to maintain myself in a manner that I should have and be grateful that her pain was still finally over. Cause that was my main goal. I saw her suffering so much, I wanted it to be over. So in all that we going through, God answer our prayers, but not always the way we want it to be answered. Cause I was thinking that she's gonna be there longer than one night, months and months. I was expecting to go visit and take her yeah. things, do things with her while she was there, but it didn't turn out that way. So I thank God for what it was and how he protected me in that ordeal because I was the only child. So it would have been a great ordeal for me. Mm -hmm. But God protected you. You know, at the time it happened, you didn't see it, but as you went through it and gotten through it even more, now you see just what God was doing to protect you in the way you need to be protected. And, and I'm grateful for, to God for all he's been doing for you and Sandra been going through and Kareem been going through and I've been going through and a lot of others probably have been going through things as well. And as we start talking about it and opening it up, we can see just how good God has been to us while we're going through those situations and while some of us are still going through how good he is, how protective he is of his children. And I thank God I want his children. But we got a lot we got a lot to do and and i and I, i'm great because i can see in you you know enough now as how to reach out to someone else and it may just be a listening ear that you have to offer them but you know how to do that now because it wasn't so much all the time given to you but now you know how to listen if people people are passing judgment from the day one you know blame me because a child came in you know, you know but Thank God that God did not, right. you know, right. and because you know the truth, you be able to help someone else and, and minister to them and help them get through things they're going through. And Sandra will too. Sandra been going through a lot, and because what she been going through and ordeal that she has come through, she can give up. She can give a lot of advice, and she has a listening ear, and she can receive what people have to say without interjecting too much. And just be there for them, and, and that's 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 the main thing. As as we as I have said in some of my teaching classes, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Two ears to listen more, and just one mouth we can talk. Okay. But we really need to listen to those that's going through, and those two ears will help us receive what's coming our way. And we don't need to talk all the time; just need to be there listen and receive and just offer maybe one word or two words i said three i love you and, and that can mean so much sometimes just those three words you know i love you i'm here for you and if i can whenever you need someone to talk to or yell at call me i'll receive it i won't be mad i know it's just your pain that you're going through right now you need to release and let go and that's why you're yelling at me 
and and that happens sometimes. We don't even realize just ourselves that we're yelling at someone because we hurt you. But they think we mad, but no, I'm, I'm not. And then when you stop and think, I'm not mad at you. It just came out that way because the pain I'm feeling right now. Yeah. But I, I, I'm just grateful to you ladies because y'all sharing and <laughs> been through a lot and it hasn't been easy for you. But you're coming through with a smile and some joy. I and like to joy ask you. Me. Mm-hmm. you know, no one else gave you but God. Nobody else can take it away from you but yourself. Mm-hmm. We can shut our joy down ourselves, and we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep on trusting the Lord, our Savior. Mm-hmm. Y'all I just me. like to ask a question. I'm sorry, Sandra. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be crying in a few minutes. <laughs> you good, sis? Oh um, my God, Sister Verita. Good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, I just good. like to know, um, from what you've been through, what are some things from your experience that mm-hmm. you can give advisement to other people and how to be encouraged meant to someone who's who have gone through what you've been through what are some of the helpful things that you could tell us that would be helpful for someone who may be experiencing the same thing that you have experienced mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, because as a part of like the natural life cycle, you know, parents shouldn't bury, you know, their children should be vice versa. You know, you should, your children should outlive you. I think people don't always know how to respond because that is a, uh, to me, it was a different kind of loss because, you know, my mother loves me, but she was not able to experience, you know, that particular kind of loss. Um, Mm -hmm. to, you know, really kind of guide me through that. Um, But like um, Dr. Rosa said, I think that the real thing is to be open to um, sometimes with the questions we ask, we we can come across as being judgmental. Um, Sometimes with the statements that we make, because I have um, four children and, you know, I got a lot of, well, you have other children. I'm like, well, really know what that means I mean does that mean that I didn't love this child because then I'm going to replace him with Uh with other children I think it was said out of love it was um so in the beginning people's responses to me you know were offensive to be honest um okay because even now if someone were to ask me you know children do you have I'm like okay is the answer three or four because I don't what you know, and I'm like, well, I'm always a mother of four. That's usually, mm-hmm. that's my kind of standard answer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think people were, um, um, like Dr. Rosa said, more empathetic. If they listened more and sometimes talk less, if they, um, you know, it's been nine years for me. And, you know, you get a lot of attention during the, during the service part and the planning yeah. and, you know, and the funeral, mm-hmm. then after after that, when, when it's quiet and you got thoughts running through your mind yeah. and you, you know, you're you talking to yourself, all kinds of um, negative thoughts um, that sometimes in the beginning outweigh positive reality. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have that one person, that two people that, you know, are still talking to you nine years later and saying, I'm really you know, are you okay today? Are you, are you, this month is a rough month for you? Yes. You know, you know, I, but people will, you know, all the time, other people's lives go on and sometimes you're stuck in May 24th of 2012. Cause I yes. can tell you what day of the week it was. I, yeah, I, and I'm just like, um, I, people just need to be more accepting, less, I think less, judgmental um not you should be over that by now that was you know that happened nine years ago Mm -hmm. you know or um 
and it just um and like I said, I take all all um, remarks as a, or they'll say, well, you know, he was sick, so it should have been something you expected. And to me, it's like, okay, so if you got cancer and the person dies, are you supposed to say, well, you know what, they were sick, and it, you know, mm-hmm. if you only live six months after, I mean, it doesn't lessen the loss. It doesn't right. make it less significant. Right. But you have some kind of anticipation that it might happen. Um, and I think as African Americans, we need to be more comfortable nurturing um, the topic of death and dying, um, yes. Yes. and being more educated ourselves, being more educated ourselves about our decisions. Yes. Sometimes making decisions in advance off yes. of our children yes. takes the stress off of us. Um, I. I Think the nursing part of me wants to see healthcare kind of go in that direction with education, you know. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just to know that you're accepted. Doesn't matter which how you decided it. Doesn't matter what basis you decided it on. It was my decision. Yeah, it's my decision, and it's not. It's it's my decision, and if you can't accept it, then just be quiet. Yeah, don't make me put. Don't you know put. Me, and more um, shame on me because I'm already doing that. I don't really need you to help me do that. I'm, I'm already doing that to some degree. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a, that's a big thing for me. So I, I'm very selective with who I share. Um, but now I'll just share. I'm like, you know, we made a, a withdrawal of care decision. I'm proud of that. Yes. That was what was necessary. Yes. That was the right thing. And I'm not going to be shamed into it. Um, yes. Be shamed into it. it was a wrong decision. It was a hard one. Probably the hardest one I'll ever make in all of my life. But yes. it was the best one. And yes. that's what I keep myself. I, I mean, first step, doubtful. Um, you know, and i am been under Bishop's teaching. And I'm like, it's, it seems more than I can bear, but it's not. It's, yes. it, it seems painful, but it's working for me. That's kind of how I, I'm like, I'm going to turn it around and it's going to work for me. So I, as a result of his sickness, I went back to nursing school. So, okay. I mean, I, I was not interested in being a nurse before. So that's one of the positives that came out of that. I, you know, and got sure. more hands-on experience at home. And then I went back. Man. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I'm sister, looking for the positive. Mm-hmm. Trying to look for the positive. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Can Can you please give some advisement for someone who may have, as though Cameron had siblings? How did you help your children to process through the grief because they lost a sibling, sibling, and it was with them, you know, for all of their lives. So how, what advisement would you give a parent who have, you know, has the, the sister, losing a sister or brother? How would you tell, you know, tell them to handle it? Well, at the, at the time of the death, my first thought was my other children. I'm like, our circle is broken. You know, their sibling relationship is broken. Um, and at the time they were 18, the twin was 17, and then I had a 10 year old. Um, they each spoke at the funeral. Mm-hmm. They, uh, you know, they were included in the decision making from yes. everything from the picking of the pic- videos that we did. To, and they actually read poems, they spoke. And my daughter is hard of hearing, so I made sure that there was an interpreter there. So as the eulogy went forth, she was inclusive. Um, she, you know, she didn't miss out. Um, they, um, and now we make a point to, um, like one year we, um, in honor of Cameron, we did a donation to um, the homeless right at 15th Street. We've done um, personal hype. I mean, we've tried to do something that's more positive that would give his life 
more weight. And then as my other children have done things, um, they have a hashtag that says KAJ4 because all of their initials are KAJ. So when they graduate, they're KAJ4. When they get engaged, they're KAJ4. When they're, and so they've always, um, you know, I've always tried to make an effort for to recognize that they lost as well as I lost. And, mm. you know, our loss was, they, they also lost. Yes. Um, and, I like that. and so, yes. I like how you included them. They made, made them feel part of. And so often, at, you know, someone probably needed to hear that. And because, you know, a lot of time we'll make a duck decision mm -hmm. and we leave the, the, you know, the, the children out and they are impacted as well as the parents. And yes. I, I love um, that advice that you gave. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Even Cameron. Next yeah, and we do. Off. We play something general. Yeah, because we do. We did angel trees one year. We did personal hygiene. I mean, we pretty like much tried to do something meaningful every Every, every year, every Christmas, they do get gifts, but the focus now is kind of away. So that's kind of what I like to try to do um, I like with them for I like him, like for I like us, for our he. So that's kind of something. That's awesome. I really like that. It's it, she keeping things going forth in his memory, his legacy. Yes, and, and, that, and at the same time, it's keeping. The, him alive in their heart. You couldn't ask for anything greater than that. Yes. Thank you, Verita, for sharing that. Yes. Right. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, I'm glad that you came on with us tonight because I'm sure that helps someone. And even even just even just listening to you, I I can better help and assist someone or uh, and be that encouragement to someone who really, you know, um, experienced losing a child. We, you know, we have all different type of loss, but all of it hurts, all of it's painful. And, you know, um, sometimes we just need to hear how someone else processed through to help others process through. And you just have a awesome testimony, um, awesome, encouragement and that's awesome um memories that y'all have of Cameron and um and things that y'all are doing in the re memories of him that's just awesome and I thank you for com coming on with us tonight sharing with us yes. and you are truly you are truly a blessing and I just pray that you continue to moving forward and being the light that you are being and as well as your children and the rest of your family. Amen. 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 Ladies, this, this is the end for our tonight session and thank, thank each and everyone um, for being on. Sister Rosa, you like to um, say something in clothing, closing? Closing? I've just been really blessed with discussion tonight. Knowing I, I see so much growth in everyone as they have gone through and working through their, their grief. And I know we're gonna be a, this ministry with your ladies help and other ladies help and men help as we go forth, gonna be truly a blessing in the community. We can help but help others because what we have gone through and I, I'm looking forward to it and I thank God for what he's given to us to do. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be a big help to the community. I, I just know it. I sense it and I believe it. Thank you, Sister Rita, for sharing tonight. I really, I really appreciate that. Thank you. All right, ladies, y'all have a blessed evening. And those who are out there watching us on this evening, y'all be blessed. And we like to, before we um, get off li um, live, we like to invite you for our Sunday services, 10 a.m. 
at Crown Kingdom Culture Center in um, North Augusta. Um, come and fellowship with us. We are having services each Sunday. Um, we still are asking e each and everyone to wear masks. We are doing temperature checks um, for you before you enter into services. But we truly like to see some of our viewers in service with us and to fellowship with us. And you also have the opportunity to be a blessing to Crown Kingdom Culture Center. You may do any type of do donation on www.fbjm.org. So we just invite you um, to donate unto our ministry. And everyone be blessed and have a good evening. Good night. Good night.